what the business is. It is another week in the books. It's the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, holla at your boy Animal Brown. If you're looking for me on socials, it's Animal underscore Brown. Animal underscore Brown. I am Spike Lou on everything that you're looking for me for. Absolutely, man. Producer M Extra was good. That's your boy M Extra. M Extra three on all things well, social media. Fresh haircut. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you were late. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Had us waiting all day. Got a fresh all cut. All day. <laughs> Never Ladies. late. I'm always on time. Oh, man. Even uh-huh. when I'm late. What you have on deck for the weekend, Lou? Uh, got to go to the Slim and Huskies pop up shop down at the uh, Trap Museum. Pretty cool. Got the Holly Clinton. Got the got the Holly DJ and Demo. Mm-hmm. And it was like a, a cool little Tennessee State reunion down there. Nice. Nice night. Got they to wouldn't let me there. in, though. Yeah, that's fucking hilarious. They you, wouldn't let me in. You're the only person in the world that couldn't get in a free party with <laughs> no. no security, no bouncer, yeah. no nothing. No, that was secure. Stop. <laughs> like, that was security. You walked the, up. Look, you walked guard. up and they stopped letting people in. That's like what, when you walked up. And you wanted me to buck the system. So yes. he kept, yeah, man. You gotta, Who was going to do something? All you had to do is say, I was already here, man. My pizza man, right there. The nigga with the security and the taser, he's not going to make an example out of me. What I look like in tased so somebody to, can put on world stuff? To your credit, wifey was with you. So <laughs> See? I get it. And that would have made me but more reason for me to get me? in. <laughs> no, I'm just not. Like that would they was being petty all the way around though. Like, like that that was like you literally were the only person that they stopped. Special <laughs> shout out uh old girl that won the Grand Hustle TV show was yeah. the number one hater. That was your dog too. Yeah, yeah. That was your dog when we was doing the show. I had to unfollow her and everything. She he unfollowed her. <laughs> I had to unfollow her. That was it. Shout out Slim and Huskies, man. Nice little presence Petty. they had going on down Petty there. Petty Wop. Man, that was funny, though. Absolutely. And she went and told them not to let you in. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, she went back and she was like, hey, him like, right there. He yeah. didn't go through the front. Don't let him in. <laughs> she must not know, man. It's all good, man. I think she knows very well. It makes sure what's good. What you have on deck? Uh, I went to the same event as well Friday night. You rub it in? That's what's uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Great pizza by Slim and Huskies. They coming to Howell Mill, folks, so get ready here yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah, Slim and Huskies, man. Um, and then I took it... Uh, Sunday, I went out to uh, Pont City Market, uh, grabbed some food. H, shout out to H and F Burgers, one of the best burgers in Atlanta. Mm. So yeah, that's about it. Fair enough, man. I ain't do shit. Uh, how, was the, how was the Whole Food vegan? Went home? to that new Whole Foods downtown. You hype? Yeah. You hype? That's why you didn't whole get into Slim and Husky. Five hundred. Yeah, I know. I'm hot about that's that. That's why you couldn't get in. You're Whole Foods with soccer mall. That's how you know I'm wise. I'm excited to go to the new Whole Foods. It looked lit. It's fire it's though. Tough. It's lit. four levels. It's super tough. Uh, that's definitely on my plan. That's my weekend agenda to get down to that Whole Foods. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> the grocery store is on your plans for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm super washed. It's like that's, yeah, that's near real. the top too. <laughs> with like, no it's, kids. It's, it's, it's like one two, <laughs> real speed. <laughs> Uh, all right, man, let's get back into the groove of things. Well, we got a lot to talk about on this issue. Of course, we're going to break down the for- first quarter winners and losers, uh, but you know how we get down. We've got a couple of topics first. Let's talk Kodak Black again for what mm, seems like the I can't even roll in peace. fifth time in a row. Um, Kodak Black caused a little bit of a stir mm-hmm. last week uh, when the video of him went viral of him talking about Lauren London. Uh, it kind of seemed like he was shooting a shot or whatnot. You know how kind of reckless he can get on IG Live. Now, there's not a person on earth that wouldn't say at worst, or excuse me, at best, this was just bad timing. Right. Um, But the hip-hop community took it even worse than that. The game, T.I., they were very vocal. Uh, Power 106 stopped playing his music. Even the Trap Music Museum took his photos and his whole section down from the museum. Now, my question is simply, are people overreacting? I think people are overreacting. Uh, I think... In a situation like this, you don't benefit any if you can't teach Kodak Black anything. And you don't teach Kodak Black anything by going to Instagram and addressing him. You don't teach him anything by not playing his music. You don't teach him anything by saying uh, we're boycotting Kodak Black. Kodak Black is a young man. I don't think that he's fully developed the thought process to be in the position that he's in, but he's there. Mm -hmm. He got a lot of people that follow him. A lot of people probably that follow him think the same way that he that he thinks when he was speaking to Lauren London. What someone should have said is you don't have that conversation on IG. You can have that conversation with your homeboys. Decide if you feel like that. But this ain't the place to have that conversation, especially while so many people are mourning this man's death. Right, right, right. So if I'm T.I., if this is not about me and it's about Lauren London and it's about Nipsey Hussle and it's about keeping Kodak, a young brother who had a lot of potential, no one can deny that, why am I going to Instagram addressing him? I, mean, I said this before, and, and i let you get in just a sure. second, but I said this before, and I'm going to continue to it, and nobody can say that I don't like T.I. because like, I'm one of, probably one of the biggest T.I. fans. You know that. Yeah. But he 
continuously putting his name and shit that he don't have anything to do with. And if you're going to dress it like an OG, then be an OG. Don't be a me first person to go to IG and say, hey, listen, Kodak, and put your expeditionally words on there. Like, that makes no sense. What was the word? It's expeditionally, however he said it. <laughs> Ex- expeditiously. Oh, okay. But to be to, to be serious, if, if he was really trying to make an impact into what Kodak was saying, if he was trying to say, hey, hey, little bro, like, I get it, just not right now, you reach out to him directly. You don't go to IG, you don't go to your followers. Um, see, here's the thing about the whole reach out to him directly shit. The comment was made in public, on a public forum, on a social media forum. Therefore, you are opening the door to get any type of support, repercussions, whatever it is, is going to be on social media because that's where you put it to begin with. Now, I will say this. Does this have anything to do with T.I.? Of course not. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody but honestly Lauren London and but we know that she's not probably in the right headspace to even hear this mm. right now so yes it will take somebody else to step out and somebody respected in the hip hop community who else better than Mr. Clifford Harris mm-hmm. to go online and prominent like just just check Kodak Black like you're never too old or too young to get checked like, you keep a, telling me he's young he's 16 20 right. he's not, Bro, he's been Eric but listen, Young though, but for listen, a very long time. You're absolutely right in everything that you said, with the exception of the fact he did it in public, so we got to get addressed in public. Like, it don't I have think to, but it can't, it, he opens the door. He for opens that. the door for it, but it, it, it goes to, is T.I. trying to serve himself, or is he trying to serve Kodak Black or the culture? Don't come saying you're defending the culture when you're putting this on IG. If you're defending the culture, you care about the, the, the effect that it has on this young man how he should have went about it, then you talk to him directly. Kodak Black was in Atlanta that night. He right. had a show in Atlanta. T.I., I don't know if he was in Atlanta, but I would assume he was because he. I, I feel like he wouldn't have reached out if he wasn't somewhere in the vicinity. I say that to say he could have pulled up on him. You ain't even got to make it a phone call. You can go see him face-to-face. and It ain't got to be anything disrespectful. It can be an OG to a young guy. Look, you ain't got to agree with me. You ain't got to listen to nothing that I say, but I at least want you to hear this from me yeah. because everybody else going to tell you down. And I tell you what happens when you tell somebody like Kodak Black down and, and, and you cancel him, you get him out of here. I don't want to see Kodak Black not rapping. I don't want to see like a little <laughs> shithead like that. Like he don't even have enough sense to like slick keep this going. Every week we talking about something that he say on IG. We talking about his judgment. I don't want to see him not successful. I don't want to see him not with his um, songs played on the radio. I would rather see him successful. I would rather see him grow and learn from this. And I say the only way that you're able to do that is if you address him directly. Well, like you don't go to IG. And I said the same thing. That um Jay Prince with Jay Prince, like you don't go to the kids in, in their mediums and platforms, even though it may deem effective to you in that moment, it's not gonna be effective as you want it to be on down the line. And I think that's what we need to look at Kodak on down the line because there's a generation of kids that look up to him. And that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. There's a generation of kids that look up to him. That's the problem so if you're <laughs> trying to tear him down. No. You gotta build him up. No. Like T, I can't think that he's gonna come in, correct Kodak Black, and those people are gonna be like, you know what, T.I.'s right. I'm gonna listen to him now. No, you missed that generation, bro. It's over for you in that generation. But you can reach out to the generation of people that are coming up like you, like a Kodak Black would look at T.I. and be like, okay, you're a real dude. I may disagree with you in this situation, but at least at least you had some respect for me to reach out to me. Here's the thing. First of all, it's not 1999 anymore. It's 2019. I don't need to pick up a phone to call anybody anymore. That's what we have social media for. Nah, that's everybody Every, else's business. No, Th- then no, you're putting it in everybody else's no, business. No, no, no. You're making it known that this will not be tolerated. Like, you not, we, we get shitted on by people outside of the culture. We don't need people inside infiltrating and doing the same shit. Absolutely. Dude. That's what you're not going to do. Absolutely. And that's why you have those conversations amongst yourself if you're able to. Nah. I understand. Like, if it's somebody that can't get in touch with Kodak Black, if it's me or you or someone of that nature, then of course, go to social media, air him out. Do you thank pieces and all that stuff if you got a blog <laughs> feel free but if you're ti you hold a bigger responsibility than to go to ig and and, and dispute with a, a kid no nah, kid nah, nah. you got children so, his age so you let your son go to ig and argue with him you don't do that so you don't think kodak learns anything from this i don't because he i heard i heard the half-hearted apology and the only reason i feel like that he apologized is because are uh, everybody mad at me? He don't. He still don't understand what he well, did wrong. Right, and and you and that's my point. Mm-hmm. He doesn't understand. So right. situations like this will have to continue until he understands. <laughs> so you have to be held I accountable. So I'm he's not use, being held accountable. I'm going to use gotcha. your word. I think he's too dense mm-hmm. to, in order to. Yeah, well. This to be something that affect him, and he'd be like, "Well, you know what? Last time Ti <laughs> did this man on IG, so I ain't gonna do it this time." But 
if it come up again, he'd be like, man, you remember that time I said about Lauren Lee and T.I. called me or we had the show in Atlanta and T.I. pulled up on me. That means stuff to kids. Right. Well, not kids, but young men. Right. Older men who they can look up to and say, hey, this is how you should handle this, young brother. But this but is how they you, communicate now, though. Right. Do you, but you don't You don't have to dumb yourself down to the generation. I don't think I want to communicate. Yes, yeah. it the is. You're doing what though. they're doing. It's the same thing, like I said with J.P. You can't do what kids do to communicate look, with kids. Parents don't do that. Let me ask you, you this. You don't dumb yourself down to a do child's you, level. T.I. in the video looked like he just woke up. Do you really think about he? You, you really think he was thinking at that level? Mm -hmm. Oh well, let me call him and do. It. I don't think he did. I think he was just reacting Good point. to what he Good heard. Point. And and to that, I would say, yeah. then quit acting like you're putting on a cape and running to the defense of hip hop. This was self serve. He's an elder statesman. All right, then did be an elder statesman and have a conversation. Don't run the IG fresh off because you seen something pop on your phone and Kodak Black said you don't even like. He was mad. It, it's off of what, you, and that's fine. But he's older than Kodak Black. I can't react the same way that I reacted when I was when I was. 21 if I'm mad when I'm 37. I can't do that. So my point is, if you somebody said something about your friend, mm -hmm. right, who just right. tragically was murdered, right. you don't it probably doesn't even have this guy's number. Mm -hmm. So your first reaction is to react. I mean, to react. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. With, with, in 2019, and I you're tell you reacting what, with my friends. IG. Yeah. You know who I'm? Ca I'm calling my friends. I'm not going and. And this just may be a me thing because I don't. I, I don't think I've ever went to IG live. But I, and I guess this is maybe what you're saying, but. If I were that upset, Instagram is not the first place that I would go. And well, I thought I thought that T.I.'s thought process would be the same well, his, because of everything that he's put out there in all the previous years. He's a public years. figure, though. Yeah, his platform is bigger than yours, so his impact is, is to make a statement. That, and, you know what I'm saying? I will say this, too. I don't think people are overreacting because this is like strike 12. Oh, yeah. They, I think yeah. people have the debt. Like, okay, don't Maybe get it confused. <laughs> don't get it confused with me excusing it or saying oh, that it was right. Oh, like, good. it's perfectly oh, yeah. fine that people reacted the way that they reacted. I think that I just expect more out of someone like T.I. I expect Game to go on Instagram and say this. He like, I expect though. that. He was tripping. Who was? Game was tripping. Yeah, like, I expect that, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, I expect How? that. And, and I think every week I come up here with T.I., I hold him in a different regard. I, I, I just is just the respect that I have for him and everything that he's put out there and the body of work that he has. I think that did did engaging in these simple matters it doesn't do do well for him. Game was he was bullshitting. The the only re, we've mentioned Game's name once this year and it was only because <laughs> some he, he he shitted on Kanye's wife in the rap and his little. Uh, the little low key video of him doing his album release part, and then you turn around and say to like, "Stop, bro." That he, but, he, no, but he was real close he put, to Nipsey, though. But I'm saying so he, he felt in a different way. That's true. My point in bringing game up is that he is in the same conversation when you're talking about a response because he did the same thing that Ti did. I yeah, don't but, expect Ti right. and Game to run to the same medium. So no, like a lot of people did said, though. And no, I, they was I, I, don't, I don't look at T.I. like those people is what I'm saying. T.I. is a different person from those people I think in my opinion. Yeah, but you're missing the human element of it all. That's so right. like, my, my point is the human element, especially with Game himself, mm -hmm. is because they were real close. So Gilly was close too. Yeah. He took offense to it as well. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah, Gilly said something as well. Not, yeah. Like, listen, man, I don't I can't dictate how people respond to it. I just think my expectations of the response okay. from T I were fair. a little bit higher than what they were. Yeah. I don't understand what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Nothing? Just he just gonna him. not say nothing? I told you you're supposed to call him, bro. But no, that's what I told that's what I've been no, saying. For people, five people can't be let off the hook by doing this shit in public and acting the ass. Even Kodak's homeboy in the video was like, bro, you're doing too much. Yeah, he's but, like too soon, but listen, bro. Though, you listen though, just because Ti doesn't respond on Instagram and you don't see it, does not mean he's letting them off the hook. Well, that's true. No, but people you know need to know that like, though. I think people need to know that. I think they need. Nah, and, people and, need to and know. And you, you know what? And though. you know what? That's on Kodak Black. All I need to do as the OG is reach out to him, have the conversation, and if Kodak Black down the line want to be like, you know, who reached out to me and made me realize that this was wrong, Ti. If this was strike one, I'd understand. I mean, I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> I don't got nothing to do with how many strikes. I'm just saying, I, I look at it from T.I.'s vantage point. I'm not even judging Kodak Black because Kodak Black has already let me down. P tried that, and, and And that's a great point that you bring up, and I think that's part of the reason and part of the way that T.I. should have looked at it and reached out and refrained for a second. Kodak Black is screaming for someone to help him. He didn't work with P. He didn't talk about he uh, sprung on the old head. Uh, what's the Nick Nick from Onyx? He's screaming for somebody to be like, hey, y'all help me because I don't know what to do. I keep saying this dumb shit. I keep getting this <laughs> like this, this backlash from the media. I think that I'm just being me. I think that I'm doing what you guys did before me, but nobody's helping him. Everybody's just like pointing their finger and saying, no, don't do that from Instagram. You can't do that. Uh, 
this is the last thing I'm gonna say, and it's, it's one thing when you're 21 and you're and you're young and dumb with no resources. It's a whole nother thing when you're 21 and you you've got resources galore like Kodak Black and people have tried to reach out. Charlemagne has tried to fuck with That's him. True. He has tried to fuck with him. It's yeah. inexcusable when you got resources though. Yeah. That's my only knock on the whole he young and all of that shit. Yeah. That can only fly but for so long. He's habitual at this point. Yeah, he that's is. what's that's what's he going is. And I, I like I said, I think he's screaming for help. And somebody has to help him. Uh, moving on, man. Let's take it up top to New York. Jim Jones. Uh, he's worn several hats over his extensive career. Now you can add consultant to his resume. Um, the artist announced on IG that he is starting his own consulting firm to help up-and-coming artists navigate the rap game. Now, Lou, if you were an underground rapper with a little bit of a budget, would you read that to Jones for his services? Yeah, I could see. I, Jim Jones is a smart businessman. He was behind a lot of the marketing and promotion with Dipset. Uh, a whole lot of the video direction and just part of it being a movement and more than a click. The clothing, uh, everything that you've seen, I feel like Jim Jones had a hand in it. And he had a hand in it from being a hype man. Yep. Jim Jones has built a hell of a career in hip-hop. And I think that he could offer some good advice. Mm. To people who are coming up in the game, shit, he's managed to be relevant for the last ten years, and he ain't had a hit in God this knows how long. This is very true. You know what I'm saying? Like, since balling, so I, I feel like that he can at least. And I ain't gonna tell you he can tell you how to be a superstar and get your song on the radio, but if you're trying to make a living off being a rapper, I think Jim Jones has a lot of vital information that he can share with young kids. Man, parts of me wants to say yes, and parts of me wants to say no. <laughs> Um, the part of me that wants to say no was Jim Jones last year selling VL phone service, Vamp Life phones, Vamp Life service, and then the Vamp Life clothes, which is just knockoff versions of you know more popular clothes, except with Vamp Life replacing yeah, the logo. Hello, VL. That's <laughs> trash. But the other part of me wants to say, like you said, he's been in the game going over a decade easy. He's seen multiple facets of the game from video directing, from being an artist, to even being on TV with Love and Hip Hop and then breaking off and doing his own show with his gal. So he's kind of seen several different angles. So, hey, if I'm somebody who thinks maybe I can make it in the music game and then I can segue into maybe something bigger like TV, then okay, then I may break off Jones with a little bit of change. It depends on what he's talking about that ticket is. But then the other half of me thinking Jones just throwing shit up against the wall to see what'll stick. But I, I, I think <laughs> – Damn. I Bro, think this is VL this, phone service? Right, this is a little a, this, different, though. I, he should have tried this before the VL and the Vamp Life stuff, and then maybe you would take it more seriously. Because Probably. I feel like this is a good lane for him to be in because uh, the, the resume is there. Like, we, we've said it. Like you said, he, he went to a different TV show. He's been yeah. directing. He wants to do movies. He had alcohol. They got clothing. <laughs> Jim Jones can at least teach you how to get a check. And, and, and at, at, the ve at the very least, a lot of young rappers and young entertainers need to know how to stay relevant, how to get different streams of income. So I, I'm not mad at it. He can't be busting nobody head, though. Nah, like, Jim Jones can't come to me and be like, it's going to be a half a million <laughs> for my consultant <laughs> service. Like, bro, you got to slow down. No, no. Negative. You know yeah. Now, he got the Rock Nation plug, too. Yeah. I think it's um, actually not, it's, I think it's actually a great idea, mm -hmm. but I'm just um, anxious to see the execution of said idea. True. Is it just you have a 30-minute phone call with Jones every Monday and right. Friday? Like, I, yeah, yeah, are they going to have a process? I'm sure they thought about all this. got to be a process yeah. in place. I hope so. Now, I need Jones to have, like, a team. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was going to say, I, I actually, if I'm hiring Jim Jones for this, I really don't even want to talk to Jimmy. I want to talk no, to the talk people to that made him success. I need to talk to the team. Oh, I see what you're saying. Everybody around here, you know what I'm saying, they set up the tours and all that. I don't want nobody relaying information. I don't want to hear nothing <laughs> through Jim Jones. It ain't going to honor me to talk to Jim Jones if I'm spending my money. I want to talk to the people that know. I'm surprised that more people actually don't do this. They give a lot of free game away on that Instagram. Is, they give a lot of you're free right. game on documentaries and, and interviews and <laughs> things of that nature. I, I I saw him actually. I bet. I bet. I know where he got this from. I watched the interview. Gary V. I saw him and Gary. Did you watch that? Uh -huh. Man, listen, y'all. YouTube that Gary V. and Jim Jones dinner. It's them sitting in a restaurant. It's basically like being a fly on the wall yep. of a conversation between two businessmen. It's very dope. Gary V. might be my spirit animal. He said some of the realest shit Man, he was so ever on there that I resonated with. Gary V. Super Vee. tough. That's so, Nipsey. Boy, he was toe up about yeah, Nipsey. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He did a dope-ass tribute to him as well. Yeah, yeah, Gary V.'s mastered this whole social media round. Oh, man, he got this. So that's what I'm saying. Lock. I think he's getting that game from him. Uh -huh. I, I, I bet that's where it came from. And I bet more people follow suit, too. That ain't a bad thing to do. Um, let's take it back uh, to Philly, man. Lil Uzi Vert. Uh, hey, man, he got real fans out here. Um, how real? Real enough to pay hackers 
on the Discard app. Don't ask me what the Discard app is. I'm washed. I only know like three apps. Never heard of that. Uh, but <laughs> he paid. That he got them paid to pay uh, whoever this is on the Discard app to drop unreleased Uzi songs. All right. Now twelve hundred and fifty dollars was raised. <laughs> To have the song Money Keep Coming released. One song. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind that song is now available on YouTube and other apps for free now. Right, right, right. Uh, my question is, what if any artist would you pay a small amount, let's say a thousand, mm. for an unreleased song and no one else has heard? I'll pay a rack to hear that Drake response. <laughs> I'll pay two racks I for that Drake 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 I, for, the, for the alleged Drake push a T response mm-hmm. that was do supposed that. to be the button. Don't do that. The nuclear button. I'll pay to hear that. I, I, I would. I would pay to hear that. Uh, uh, listen, that's the first thing that jumped off to my to my head was yeah. the Drake push a T response. Man, I would. I know. I think Kendrick might got something out there with with Drake name written on it. I wouldn't mind hearing. Um, but it's tough, man. Other than would that, you rather hear the Drake? To Kendrick or the Kendrick to Drake? The Drake. To, I'm a Drake. I'm a, I'm a you bigger would rather Drake, hear Drake fan bitch. than a Kendrick fan. It's just slightly. I, I'd rather hear Drake. I mean, I rather. I guess I'd rather hear the Kendrick because I'm a big Kendrick fan. But what about this? They said that Biggie had the response to Pop to hit him I up. I sure did. They said that's there. I'd rather hear that. You'd rather hear that? I'd rather hear that over Number everything one. we just named. I'm not going to lie. The Biggie response to Pop. I think I would go with that. It's time for that. Somebody released that. It's time. Time heals all wounds. Listen, it's 2019. Finna be 2020. It's safe to go ahead and put Angie Martinez and put out her little lost Pac interview where he aired people out and shit. Have go ahead and put that. Big, yeah, it's in a book. Oh, okay, gotcha. Her little memoir. Gotcha. That I didn't read, mm. and I know M Extra got the digital copy of that. <laughs> how was that? Uh, <laughs> how was that? Or Angie Martinez book, sir? I, I haven't <laughs> read Angie Martinez. I love Angie Martinez, but I haven't read her See? book. Of course you do. Um, Why you, wouldn't you? Who, I, I'm just joking. Who would <laughs> you? a uh, hip-hop staple, sir. <laughs> who would the uh, un- unreleased album be that you would want to hear? No, song. Or what? Song? Yeah, song, song, this song. This was song. Tw- they I paid mean, 12 50 for a single song. Yeah, oh, I don't know. That's that's a great question. It would have to be some one of my favorites. So it has to be between like J, Big, Tip. Mm. Like You're not that. paying 12 for a Tip song. Not in 2019. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What, what about like the, a Luda disc or some shit? Yeah, like for sure. Ten years ago, mm. it should have to be fired. Though. Yeah, definitely. He didn't want, want that ludicrous smoke back in the day. And that's my guy. What? what? <laughs> he didn't want the ludicrous smoke. <laughs> what he do you mean? Like that? He never really just took him out like he was supposed to. That's true. That's all I'm saying. That's Bruh, true. That's what I mean. Go back and listen to rap scene in the basement. That, that freestyle that he did. He murdered him. That's edited. Mm. That don't count. I edited it. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, you don't remember? I, I remember that. I, I do remember that though. Keep uh, running your teeth. I'm gonna come and disturb your peace. Yeah, tough. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't better than that was stomp. That, was that after or before? That uh, stomp was a was some was some sneak. What this about shit the war with God though? <sighs> that's, huh? that shit yeah, fired too. Was what is Luda. it? Did Luda war with God? The Ti did stuff. Yeah, I don't remember that. One. What? War with God? It's on his yes. last. Oh, that thing's on his last album. No. That's why, because his last album was trash. Next, yeah, <laughs> next to last album. It's on, yeah, it's on the next to last album. Yeah. That shit was Theater of the Mind. Fire. No, Release yeah, Theater, theater of the Mind. Yeah. It should have been thrown back into the theater. <laughs> <laughs> All his albums should be thrown back. <laughs> nah, Luda, nah, don't do Luda Christ. like that. Yeah, Luda, don't do that. He's, overrated. He's top three overrated. Easy, and it ain't even close. Man. I will say this, though. I'm mad I ain't got none of these Uzi songs in the hard drive. I let them go for the cheap. Y'all can get them for 500 <laughs> Fuck 1250 For real. Y'all can get these on sale. Yeah, y'all can yeah, get I two can. for 750 <laughs> <laughs> Easy. It's time to clear that hard drive out. He got the new Rock Nation shit. Uh, uh, yeah. What if he was behind this? <laughs> what if he was a nigga hacking? <laughs> I was going to he say he's splitting that with a nigga. He's splitting that with a nigga strong. He might just need them Man, 1250 listen, Come on with that. Cause he got, they supposed to drop two songs this week. Yeah, uh, Drama said he was going to drop two songs. I don't know what happened. Why Drama still trying to bird feed everybody Lil Uzi shit if, what do you if, mean? if Jay came in and said, that I got this now? Nigga, it's, it's Drama's for, artist. It's time for Drama to remove himself from nah, the situation. Man. I think that's Crazy. what Jay was telling him. Nah. Drama really bullshit right now. I promise you Jay didn't say that. Yes, he did. Nah. He called him like, look, bro, you bullshit. <laughs> Niggas been waiting on this album for three years, dude. What are you doing? Right. And drama like, I'll give you two songs next week. Yeah. Bro, what? Yeah. Drama <laughs> smart. Drama smart. Mean? He milking it. Yeah. He's, he he's building his last chance. He's nigga. building the anticipation. He, 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 he got another artist, too. Who? Oh, no, I know he don't. He ain't got, oh, another, about, um, he ain't got no another yeah. white Uzi. Yeah. He ain't got no another Uzi. I'm saying, you can't say it's his last chance, man. It's a business. It's his last chance, man. Right. Did, 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 well, I ain't going to say that because he yeah. might do something on down the road. Yeah, bro. you never know. I don't see drama dropping no more gangster grills, bro. He Are you thinking, you mean like as him as the main person? Period. No, he's behind, I, I, no I, I'm, little Uzi. I'm like, sure he'd rather be behind the scenes. Atlanta, hard. Like, he, like, well, drama's from Philly. Philly. <laughs> yeah, but you you know why. I mean, the reason why is you, 
Atlanta. Because drama's a businessman and he has Uzi in a contract and he's doing the right thing. Move on. What dude. do you mean? Get out of here, dude. Like what do you, you, mean? you know exactly what I'm saying. Oh, if he been burning people, if he been bird feeding people Uzi shit for three years, and Jay <laughs> stepped in within the last two months and was like, "Look, bro." Give us the guy. We don't know album. the inner workings of the contract. I, I can pretty. It could be a clause. I, I can pretty much guess what something. happened here. I can pretty much guess what happened. Here. All Jay you was would be like, doing is assuming. Jay was like, "Look, bro, this whole you bullshit. Come on with Uzi yeah. shit." The, the key word is guess <laughs> what happened because you don't know what happened. I'm man. speculating as a fan. That's man, what we do here. Before we get to this music break, man, let's talk Kendrick and Big Sean. Now, if you remember, let's rewind. Uh, Big Sean dropped a freestyle, me, myself, and I. A lot of people thought he was talking about Kendrick. Well, a lost version of Kendrick's Element record was released the other day, and it contained a couple of bars aimed at Big Sean. Uh, now, Sean has since shouted out Kendrick at the Dreamville Festival, uh, but let's say you're a part of Big Sean's team. Are you pushing the button on the Kendrick disc? I said it earlier this year, yes. Big Sean need this. I don't know if he want to step in the fire, if he believes that he can take this Kendrick heat, but he do need this. And and, and it did nothing better would be for him to come out and just swinging. I ain't saying he can survive it, mm. but if he come out swinging, I think that'll put people, it'll put Big Sean in a whole nother conversation. It, it, and really, to be honest, he should come out swinging just because Kendrick been pump faking for so long. <laughs> we done heard about the fake, almost Drake this. Now True. this is like came out, but it didn't come out. Like, come on, quit pump faking, man. Like, he had to go on and give Kendrick what he's looking for so he can go on and absolutely ob obliterate <laughs> him <laughs> off the map. Uh, what, what, what? Do uh, what? No, first obliterate? Off, <laughs> yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> Listen, now, I will say this, though. You're right. He's been hitting niggas with the pump fakes for a couple of years now, and, that, and that's some slaw. I will say, though, the bars were fire, though. They were. <laughs> man, listen, man. They were fire. But I don't think Big Sean, actually, I know for a fact Big Sean would never respond because of the space that he's in right now. If you've been no, following the Big yoga Sean, space, listen, if you've been following Big Sean on IG for the past two or three weeks, he's been going through it. It's clear he's talking to directly to the camera what? on IG, look at me in my fucking eyes and shit. Stop doing Wait, that, what? rappers. Hey, he ain't been shaving and shit. What, what I don't Big know Sean what he got going on. No, he, he mentioned he has some mental health issues. That he was going through late last year, and he's been kind of on that wave for the is last it, couple weeks. Is this due IG. to his breakup? You don't know. I don't know. He didn't say. He didn't say. But I don't think that now would be the time. First of all, somebody's petty for <laughs> leaking that now, and Big Sean's in this sensitive state right now. And he shouted Kendrick out. <laughs> he goes jump out at, the at the window. Dreamville show. He did. Why? What did he? Well, he shouted he multiple don't want people no out. Smoke. And Kendrick was just one of the. He don't names. want no smoke with Kung Fu Kendrick. I wonder how old this is. Maybe they had to squash it behind. That's no, no, damn. I, I get that part, okay. but I'm saying I wonder how. Like they had to squash it behind the scenes or something. There's no probably, way. There's no way I'm a rapper and stuff like this keeps happening to me. He probably like, I gotta heard this and then did the freestyle. That's you what I'm saying. saying. So yeah, that, maybe that's. I hope that's it. Well, yeah. Then who the fuck was sitting on this damn because lost I, Kendrick yeah, first? Because other than that, he got a snuffle when he see him, bro. For real. <laughs> Big Sean is. He got a swing on this nigga, Big man. Sean is Big Sean not Sean doing that. Snuffing. Nobody. Yeah. That'd be the shortest fight ever. Man, literally and that's figuratively. What I'm saying. Like, like, come on. That oh, I, I, but I, I think you first of all you chumping Big Sean though I think if those two that's what I'm right. saying it'd be very entertaining it'll go two rounds before Kendrick absolutely <laughs> dog walk him out here <laughs> and, you know, like, he'll he'll entertain it okay give me but what that's you my got, point chump. like Sean had to hear this in the past and they had to talk about it because there's no way this slides for real I mean I, but, I think it does slide with Big Sean no you got him fucked up. No, but he's, I, he's just you know, never bit nobody head off either. Now let's not act like yeah, Big Kendrick Sean ain't the, just no. Either one of them is yeah, not Kendrick just ain't the big bad niggas. monster either. Like what you mean? He just cold though. He, he can right. rap, but he, he ain't, ain't the big bad monster. Yeah, yeah, I will give you that because yeah. of the pump fakes. But I don't yeah. think anybody wants to engage with that though. Yeah, but that's the thing. I see. The thing is, I think somebody needs to because I, I feel like Kendrick ain't nobody. Ain't nobody. Capable. I feel like Ken, see. That's the thing. See, that's what like, that's like, what people like you think. Well, listen, they're only. Two or three other names that you're gonna mention with Kendrick for him to respond for him to respond. Yeah. So he cool with J Cole. J right. Cole is probably the most capable. Yeah. I know where you were going with your Dreamville. No, no I wasn't going to say that. But yeah. I think that J Cole would be the most capable to go toe to toe with Kendrick. But think about. I don't think anybody else can. Think like, about last year, man. Nobody thought Aubrey was gonna get smoked by Pusha T either. Oh wait, if you talking about like. I'm not standing for any Aubrey slander, though. No, nah, but I mean, if Pusha no, T came I mean, in, Kendrick, it'd be... That's what I'm that, saying. That's a viable opponent, but yeah, I just don't you, see... You never know. You just want to know what he would do if the spotlight yeah. was okay, on him. And I feel like because of, he was in the finals. Because of his 
ability, people think, oh, you don't want to mess with Kendrick. You know, it's like somebody you heard fight, but yeah. you ain't never seen them fight. Big bad wolf. Okay. <laughs> I, with the exception of Pusha T, I don't think that nobody want no smoke though. I will give you that Pusha. That's Drake a good one right there. Man. Nah. Drake, Drake, Drake don't want Scorpion that smoke. Don't want that smoke, man. Fuck you, man. I promise you, Drake. Don't you cried in the car when that push your teeth. He did. He did. <laughs> he <laughs> did. He I fell asleep in the car. Man. <laughs> Drake was on the ropes. Sleep. Shit put me to sleep. Drake was on the ropes in blackface. <laughs> and nigga was like uh, Mikhail Fifeman, uh paid in full. Speaking of put me to sleep, what you got for the music? Break, nah, that was a good <laughs> That was a good one. <laughs> Speaking of Big Sean, our first uh, music break is Icewear Vezo. Featuring Big Sean, the song is called Balance. I swear, D Town stand up. Bezo, V as in Bezo. We are back. That was I Swear Vezo featuring Big Sean. Of course, we only play Big Sean's verse. The song's called Balance. How you oh, feel man, about that, don't sir? Do them like that. Thankfully, we only play Big Sean verse. Yeah. Vezo wasn't talking about a thing. Big Sean ripped it. Big Sean ripped it for sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, man, I like the I like the Big Sean verse. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. I, if, if I'm gonna listen to Detroit rap, it ain't gonna be Vezo. I like that I he uh, used him for the hook though. He ain't from he ain't from Detroit. I don't know where. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he, he is. Sound I like it. Yeah. Yep. Sound like He's from Detroit. Shout out my Pistons. We're going to the playoffs. Yeah, I like the record. It's a good record. About a B. It's okay. B minus. It's a good record because Big Sean is on it. <laughs> Well, that doesn't make it. Michael Jordan was a, the Bulls were good because Michael Jordan was on the team. <laughs> good point. <laughs> doesn't matter. Fair assessment, sir. Fair assessment. Uh, shout out Vezo, man. That'll be the last time we play him. Oh, um, man. That was Animal Brown. Vezo, keep doing your thing, my nigga. <laughs> going to Detroit. Watch I'm good it. in the D. I'm, I'm staying in Auburn Hills. Um, all right, man. <laughs> Topic time. First quarter recap. We're at the first quarter mark. We were, what, about 12 weeks into the year? It's been relatively quiet. Very low quiet key. first quarter, especially compared to last year. That's what I'm saying. But we still got some winners. We still got some losers mixed into that. Um, I got two. You got two. Mm-hmm. Kick me off with a – where you want to start? You want to start with a winner or a loser? Which one are you more uh, excited and um, passionate to talk about? I'll go with a winner. Okay. I'll go with my winner uh, for the best album that's came out this year so far. Oh, my God. What? Rapper go to the league. Let's mm. go. Let's take it all the way there. I think 2 Chainz successfully put himself on another level. I've seen a lot more 2 Chainz. Than I've seen in the past, and this is not with the Pink Trap House. This is not with as much marketing. I feel like that went into the album, other than it being the the theme song for the NBA All Star Game weekend. But I do feel like that he was very visible here. I think that he provided a great product. I'm biased because I'm a fan, but I have seen it and heard it everywhere. And I think that he was successfully able to catapult, well, not catapult, but merge into another lane to be even bigger this year and to set himself up for even bigger things. When I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case with this album especially with him reinventing himself and maybe this being a tail end i feel like after the album came out it's less of a tail end of a career and more so of a catapult to doing more things because of the way that people gravitate towards two chains i could argue that he might be a loser mm. in this first quarter even though i don't have him listed as one simply because i feel like that album came out to mixed reviews okay and with the highly critically acclaimed last project it, it, this was a little bit of a letdown especially after being delayed for so long mm. and then people look at that whole lebron james being an a and r thing as like just a shtick yeah, like people that. didn't really I, believe that I, I blame that on lebron i don't <laughs> think two chains took no flag from that i think that just goes to the bad year that lebron's having i i, I do think <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that since two chains I said this when the album came out that he really was was going to please or trying to please his contemporaries. He wanted to be looked at as a lyricist, someone who could put out a body of work that could be held up there with the classics. And I think that he was able to do that. I think that he takes for granted, though, I will give you this, he takes for granted being able to capture the the, the fans like he did with Pretty Girls Like Trap Music. I think that he felt like, I can go to this album, give y'all this Rapper's Rapper's album, and then this spring I'm going to give y'all something different that that makes you understand why I'm 2 Chainz. I do think that he got that in the bag. Because this was... Borderline forgettable. If it wasn't for the record mm, with Ariana Grande, this. I was just listening to this. Well, you're a number one fan. The it's rest of the world who are just, you know, it's better than their future, is it not? I forgot Future came out. See, no, no two biggest uh, artists that came out this year. Two Chainz album definitely grew on me. I'm not gonna lie, but Ooh, uh, it would. But um, would you consider bi- him a winner as an Atlanta biased person? Uh, yeah, I think he. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a loss. Yeah, he's from the South Side. Of course, it's a loss. We ain't gonna call him a winner. Yeah, I mean. I'm not biased though. Of course, you Future not. album is still good. You flexing. That's that you just and we, and we can pull up your review. And it says <laughs> two good two two point five. Yeah, I have two point yeah. five mics. Reels, excuse me. Man, I'm Who gonna do you have? My, Who's your uh, the first winner? I'm gonna kick my winner off. Um, 
it's actually again when we talked about this beforehand, we said it could be people, person, place, thing, whatever. Um, I'm gonna say hip hop behind the lens. Um, it's been quiet for new music mm-hmm. this first quarter, but like video content from musicians has been popping. If you look at Killer Mike's Trigger Warning that came out on Netflix, I thought that shit was fire. It was. Um, he made a big wave, big dent in the culture with that. I saw him everywhere. Like Killer Mike was everywhere. About That's a two good weeks win right there. Straight. He's still on his promo roll. At what I'm yeah. saying. So like I, I thought that was super dope. I thought the Suge Knight documentary that came out on Showtime. Mm. I thought that was super dope too. Y'all check that out. We even had announcements from. 50, but the BMF actually is going to happen. The casting call went down in the A, so that's really a thing. Ice Cube confirmed that the new Friday was about to drop. Yeah. Um, we even got the, and you know, if y'all been listening to the show, you know how we feel about Wu-Tang. However, yeah, we, uh, who, no, no, we've yeah. been on here for five and a half years talking about how what, what Wu-Tang means to us. Overrated. Is nothing. Exactly. Oh, However. I can't wait to wear my 36 Chambers t-shirt. No, you burn that. Classic album. With that being said, their documentary Classic. of Mikes and Men that, again, that was just released here about a couple of weeks it, ago. It That's came what, out? No. The, the, the trailer. Oh, I was about to say. That shit looks fire. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. So the stories that are being told about hip-hop are fire right through this gap. And, we, and again, this isn't necessarily hip-hop, but the Beyonce documentary on Netflix looks dope. It's an extension of hip-hop. There, there we go. And then even the Teddy P and the fucking uh, Sam, Sam Cooke. Cook. Yeah, so yeah. music, hip-hop, oh, or an extension yeah. of Behind the Lens has been fired this first quarter. Not so much necessarily with music dropping, but yeah. at least we have that to fall back on. I just listed off 15 things you need to go watch right now. That was a good one. Yeah, that was that was good stuff. Pretty good. Really good stuff. Yeah, right? Wu-Tang, Legends. I ain't gonna lie, that documentary I like the, old. I, I, I like the Wu-Tang story, but the music just ain't it. Yeah, music ain't nothing. I mean, y'all from Nashville, man. No disrespect. I'm from New York. <laughs> I'm from Queens. No disrespect, Relax. man. <laughs> Snicky. Snicky. Yeah, from Decatur, nigga. Uh, you from Decatur, uh, nigga. Don't do that. I'm from Queens. Yeah, so, but I was big on East Coast hip-hop. Yeah, I, I miss I miss the Wu Tang movement. Yeah. You was However, big on East Coast hip hop. Sure. Yeah. I'm watching that documentary yeah. first night. They can listen to our podcast and tell that I'm the only one who listed most deaf on one of those albums. Y'all didn't. Yeah, the, I, I understand. I, yeah, I cringed when you said it. Exactly. Um, People know what's up, man. Give me another team. winner, man. What? Um, <laughs> give me another winner for this first quarter. I think Dreamville was a winner for the first. Yes, sir. Excuse me for the first quarter. Um, Dreamville had their Dreamville Fest this last weekend. Yep. And we used to the forefront. Oh, excuse me, we used to J. Cole being the front man, and that's the person that you see. I feel like that he's did a successful job in spreading the wings and putting everybody out there. We had the XXL cover. We had the Dreamville like tour. Or J.I.D. has been making moves. I feel like the Dreamville has been everywhere, and you're starting to reference them like you reference TDE. It ain't just about J. Cole anymore. It's about the young guys that he got coming up. It's about him transferring to an executive. And I feel like the people respect J. Cole's business game, and we want to see can he come through, and I feel like that he's off to a great start. The whole Whole, uh, Dreamville sessions down here in Atlanta right. incorporate more people with Dreamville. We've been dying to see J. Cole reach out, work with other people, how he is in other spaces. The Middle Child single came out, fire, working with producer, uh, different producers. We Finally. This is everything that we have been begging for. They said him and T. Nasty have several other things in, in, in the uh, the vault. T. T- What's minus. T- minus? Oh, <laughs> Whatever. They have several other songs in the vault, so he's really stepping out there this year and doing what we wanted J. Cole to do, and he's bringing Dreamville along with him, with the exception of changing his clothes. I agree. Oh, um, my goodness. I agree a yeah, thousand percent. I'm sliding there, man. And, and I actually, one of my winners I had was J. Cole himself mm. um, for not only, like you said, getting Dreamville out there more prominently, um, like Double XL cover, festival, all of that stuff that you named, even kicking the year off with the buzz that he had surrounding. He ran that week. Dreamville ran that week that yeah. they were in the A for the studio sessions 100%. because we wanted to know who they were in the yo with, who what they, they were working in, what the fuck is this they got going on. The invitations were dope. All of that was fire. But I say J. Cole specifically because, two, he's been on that record with 21. I know that came out in 2018 late, but it's been playing like it just came out yesterday. Fire. That still gets clocked. That's probably one of the hardest verses on the radio right now. Then the middle child came out, and where people might have thought it wasn't all of that at first, it has grown legs. He played it at the halftime. I mean, excuse me, um, halftime show at the All-Star game. The visual helped it out, too. That helped a lot. The video was fire. Definitely helped. That definitely helped. Helped it out, um, and it's grown on a lot of people. So 
J. Cole has found a dope way to be super relevant without being in your face and extending himself too thin. Um, it, it, he's finding that right balance yeah. of doing that. So I, I have to give him props for that. He said he was going to run this year. We're supposed to get the fall off uh, a little bit later this year, and we're supposed to get that Dreamville compilation. So to be in the news like this with no no project, that, smart play by J. Yeah. Cole. He's doing exactly what you're supposed to do as an 100%. exec. 100%. I think he's growing into that role that we want him to grow into. Absolutely. Yeah. You got What, what winners you got in the Uh Definitely had uh, Dreamville uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um it's a uh, JID and Black album coming. I saw that. Yeah, we so call them Six Black on here though. Yeah, Six uh, Black. It's, it's Black. Cause y'all, <laughs> y'all don't know any better, but Six Black. It's talk. Black. Shout out to Six. Out black six. Uh, so yeah, definitely um, uh, Dreamville and J Cole. Uh, and I, I want to. Uh, I think uh, kind of piggyback off what you were saying. For sure. Um, but I think in a different atmosphere as far as uh, the internet and blog wise goes and music. Uh, podcasts and uh, rap mm. uh, blogs and things like that. I think they've been doing great. Content. Content has been great yeah. for this first part of the year. Especially so. the on the TV podcast. Yeah. Yes. As uh, content connoisseurs, yeah. I number one. won't say that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So number one with content. Um, who's your number one loser so far in this first quarter? Uh, we spoke to this a little bit earlier, and I, I want to double down on it just so if anyone was confused. Kodak Black. Yeah. Kodak yeah. Black. Should be uh, off the, the the album that came out at the end of last year, yep. the Dying success that he's had, yep. and 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 being on the road, probably as popular as he's ever been, but he can't keep his foot out of his fucking mouth, and yep. I feel like that he's screaming for help, like I said earlier, and just doesn't know how to do it. He don't know how to approach older people that he respects to get the information that he needs to be an even bigger star. I think that he's letting a lot of his fans down by the stuff that he's saying because it's turning them off of him, and it's hard to like someone who continuously does the idiotic shit that he does. It's tough. Like it's 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 very hard, even if the music is good, especially for people that are older than him, people of our age or something of that nature. We look at it and be like, he's too ignorant. Even if the music is good, I don't want to hear it just because he's so dumb. So I feel like that someone needs to take him under his, take him to have conversations with him, build trust with him. I, I feel like someone has to have a relationship with him where they don't want anything. The problem with the Master P relationship was as much game as Master P going get, to give you, and I'm not saying that he's wrong for this because he's a businessman, he going to want something back eventually. Right, right. And right. I don't think that sits right with Kodak Black. He looking at it like, why can't you just help me out off the strength of being big bro? It don't happen like that in business. And somebody need to walk down that road with him and explain that to him and explain why that's okay. Because you're going to have to conduct yourself in this manner. You're going to have to conduct business like this later on if you're fortunate enough to be in this game. So I feel like that he's really letting himself down, the people around him down, and his fans down by just being idiotic throughout the the, the whole first quarter of 2019. Yeah, because the problem is you can drop a record that everybody likes, the Dying to Live record. People were fucking with that. But then you, you drop that once. You have one release date for that. You're on IG every week saying something stupid. That stuff starts to last longer and live longer than your music is, and that's a problem, especially for a guy who's had a steady stream of hot records for a couple of years now. Like, it's easy to be a fan of him musically. Um, I, his first album, The Painting Pictures, or whatever the fuck it was called, that was a nice <laughs> album. You know what I'm saying? Is to be honest, and then The Die and the Live was cool. He's always, he's featured on a couple of people's joints that was hot, even when his underground shit before he grew his hair. He had some hot records on that shit. Cardi B made a hit off of his flow. So, like, he's got potential. And it, but it it's, it ma- it makes you conflicted as a fan to want to fuck with him because he's constantly doing shit. He's taking a step forward with the music and then three steps back with IG Live. He needs to. That's somebody that needs to just come off yeah, IG. Man. Yeah, he need a friend to be like, nah, bro, we ain't going live today. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we ain't going live this week. As a matter of fact, we ain't going live this month. Matter of fact, give me your phone. Right, like we ain't going live. Yeah, like, whoever his man- no live. his manager and the people around him, they are fucking terrible. Yeah. I know they probably going through it. They yeah. probably ain't got no hell. Y'all are terrible. Y'all need a PR or something. Y'all are terrible. Well, I mean. He, and, and 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 I think that one thing that we can't overlook here, when you're the breadwinner, is he probably is of his clique. Who's gonna be there? Who do he respect That's, enough if, to be like no? But if you have a manager, it doesn't. You, you manage. I mean, I I'm still paying him. No, it doesn't like, matter. You need somebody but, uh, around you that you respect you, enough to listen to a no. Exactly. A if, good manager just, will do that. If he's not should respecting P, he should do that. Yeah, that's why I said a good manager. If he ain't respecting <laughs> P and he's smacking sticky fingers, like, I think, I don't yeah. even know. Like, I, I guess what I'm saying and to he you ain't is. He smack no sticky fingers either. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, allegedly. Allegedly. Come on, man. You see I how small Kodak Black is? 
Sticky fingers ain't no big dude, man. Right. And I don't, want, I don't want no problems. He ain't gonna come up here press me like he did Charlemagne. But what I'm saying is, I just think that, that was Fredro. It. Oh. Oh yeah, that is the oh, yeah, oh hell, nice show. Didn't smack him. That's the dude that was on. Yeah, oh, okay, man, there's yeah, no you, way, you're bro. Right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Kodak Black it's is a moment a loser. of clarity. <laughs> yeah, Kodak Black is a loser. Yeah, but right. with that being said, I feel like there needs to be someone in his camp that he respects. I don't know That's if true. a manager holds enough position outside, inside. Somebody needs to speak to him and be like, "Look, bro, you, this shit finna go off the rails if you don't bring don't it back a little bit." Don't hold your breath. Um, one of my losers, man, for this first quarter, and I hate to say it because this is my guy, but I gotta say Rick Ross. It's inexcusable that he has not dropped that port of Miami. Niggas tool. finally seeing the light. No, what? niggas is finally seeing that. That light. makes him a loser because he ain't dropping. Pump it yet? your brakes. He has had that coming soon for the past eighteen months. He's been teasing with records. He's been saying uh, he had DJ Khaled tweeting about it. He had Justice League tweeting about it. It's coming soon. They had a little artwork, all of that shit. We haven't heard a peep, not a street single, not a radio single. Ross does this. He makes records in his sleep. I know this shit is fire. I saw him preview a song that he had Nipsey on. Mm. It sounded fucking amazing. Yeah, they're, they're, it's quit, done. Quit bull. Listen, the same way Nipsey dropped his project first quarter last year and owned the entire first quarter, you could do the same thing. It's too much real estate not to be dropping a project that you're sitting on, and I know it's fire. This is is quiet. That's what it's stupid quiet, dude. Like, this would have been the perfect time to drop that shit. Now the big dog's going to come summertime. You're going to get lost in the shuffle. You're going to be sandwiched in between four niggas that drop before you, three niggas drop on the same day you do, and two more drop the week after. Man, you're going to get lost in the sauce. First quarter should have been the move. Do you guys have any speculation as to why we haven't seen it? Because you say, I feel like we know the music is is Rick Ross. It's good. He know what to do. What do y'all think the problem is? I just think they want to perfect the rollout um, for the album. I mean, I think it's <clears throat> thing about certain albums that we like, they have taken, classics have taken time. This is true. Mm-hmm. So I think they want to just get everything right because this might be, let's keep it real, this might be Ross's last go round. Mm. So they, I think they want to make it just right. And I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it. I can wait for that <sighs> because I know it's coming this year. Okay. So I, I can wait. He said but, that last year. But you're slick. right. I mean, we know Cole, Drake, all of them coming. He That's Kanye, what I'm saying. He come before that. <laughs> Kanye coming. Now, I ain't taking nothing away from Ross musically because he can hang with Cole and Drake. Yeah, yeah. But the 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 the, the wave that come with Drake – the wave is gonna Man, come with cold. They gonna eat the whole summer. That's gonna, yeah, that's gonna wash over a Ross album. Other than the the real diehard fans, mm-hmm. and I do agree with you. I've been saying it for a while. I was wrong, but I do feel like it's coming to fruition now. That Rick Ross' career is on a decline, mm-hmm. and this very well may be his last chance to have a big major album before he get to the Scarface route and just like dropping stuff for his right, fans. Just, just don't like, this may it, be though, the last one. So I, I can kind of understand what you're saying and I can kind of understand what you're saying, but he is losing right now. Don't we man. need that. Rose got, he got to set a standard for this year, I feel like. Gipsy Hustle set the standard for last year with, with Victory Lap. He, Rick Ross can do that. He could have dropped in February and ate off of that for <laughs> like for about three more months because it's quiet right now. Yeah. He dropped the ball with that. Give me uh who's your second loser who took an L early nineteen? My second loser is all the old people responding on IG. Jay Prince, T I, Game. Why they gotta be old? I mean, but because they're older than the platform is intended for for them to have beef. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if Ti on there, I want to hear stuff about your kids and how you're like. I want to hear good motivational shit from Jay Prince and Ti. I don't want you going back and forth with Kodak Black. I don't want you trying to address people and telling people that you need them to get the chain back for one of your artists if you're Jay Prince. I feel like the the, the older statesmen, the elder statesmen in hip hop, have gotten to a point where they feel like they have to communicate with the younger crowd on their level and that's not necessarily the case sometimes you just gotta let that crowd be that crowd and they'll come to you if you're putting out stuff dope enough for them to hear it otherwise you need to stop shooting that way because there's nothing that jay prince i feel like can accomplish on ig when he's talking about taking getting a chain back for one of his artists there's nothing i feel like the ti can accomplish as to where he's held in the same regard by a kodak black if he's addressing him on ig 
And game is just, I mean, he's game. He's going to go to IG because that's how he got his start with the whole stripper and thing. So he, he, liked the, he liked the attention that it brings. But I do think that communicating that way for elder statesmen in hip-hop is an incorrect move. And it waters down what they have to say. And it's not the correct format for them to be addressing some of the things that they address. I, I would say all of those people you name, with the exception of Jay Prince, who just now started to get on social media, have all been present on social media for the last several Several years, like you've got Snoop, you've got yeah, you, Game, but you grow out of it. You've got Ti. They have all used. They have all embraced that medium. If none of them were on social media, we would be on here. Like, why the fuck aren't y'all oh. on social media embracing y'all? You know, technology and where the game. You weren't listening gone. to what I said. I said embracing it the way that they are. That means engaging with Kodak Black or going on there to tell people that you slept with Kanye West's wife or trying <laughs> to get a chain back. It's perfectly fine. I, I love to see Jay Prince on IG telling me about his book or giving me stories that pertain to what he has going on. I love to hear Ti on there when he's telling me about things that have. To do with uh, trap music 15th anniversary or he's talking about his kids and he, he joking with king and i love to see that type of stuff from them those personalities i feel like that that's what they should be on ig for i do not want to see ti beefing with anyone on instagram i rarely want to hear him beefing on a song with somebody at this age so i damn sure don't want to see his face on there addressing nobody and telling them what they need to do and what they don't nah, need he's to too do. entertaining i gotta see yeah him. i got it's i need right. that see, I ain't, he's too funny. i'm not here to laugh at you no nah, he's too funny i'm not gonna lie he's too good at it um, my second loser is New York hip hop fans. Um, if you think about it, this first year, first quarter, there's been zero heat coming out of New York. Mm. Zero. You can't name me one New York artist that did anything of prominence musically in this first quarter. The biggest song to come out of New York this year has been Papu's freestyling about Taco Bell and oh, Fortune man, 500 that companies, that dude. Man. That's the hottest thing that's come out of New York, dude. Hey, Boogie ain't got no song. Papu's rapping about T-Mobile and fucking Taco Bell, dude. That was the yeah. hottest thing to come out of New York. Like, that's a problem. Like, the... The, the pop in person last year was Takashi, and he's singing now. He don't even rap no more. He's singing. He's in the bing, <laughs> and he's singing like Patti LaBelle right now. So until he gets out, it is quiet, dude. Like, I, even what's up with Griselda? They're supposed to kick the door down of 2019. Conway just finally Conway just dropped, dropped something. Yeah, he just dropped the tape yeah. last week. That's the first release all year, and it didn't make no noise because nobody was thinking about music other than yeah. Nipsey. Everybody was listening to Nipsey tapes all weekend. So you drop this weekend? Like, no, nah, bro. You should have pushed that shit back like the whole rest of the rap world did. <laughs> so it's going to get skipped and washed over. Like, I, New York hip hop is stupid quiet right now, and I don't even know who's coming to save it, honestly. Where y'all get back at? With Dave East. Who? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where they at? Where's Fab? Where's any of these niggas at, dude? Fab? Where's they don't do Fab like that. He's an OG. Fab? They don't do Fab like that. Fab's an OG. Get out of here, He's an OG. Yeah, don't do him any kind of way. Yeah. That Soul Tape Fab. 4 dropped today, you'd be the first nigga to listen to it. I would bang that Soul Tape 4, but <laughs> exactly. I, I just get tired of people mentioning Fab with the elites of New York hip hop. Like, dude, last album was in 2014. What's that mean? minute? Who That's else is five that? years ago? But who else is in the elite of New York hip hop? <laughs> he not. It's quiet. Not right now. <laughs> but who else is? <laughs> Man, listen. Cardi. That's it. Cardi, That's A Boogie, stop Griselda. You can stop right, right there. Y'all telling me A Boogie not elite New York hip hop over Fabulous? I mean, well, wait, hold on. What about, generation are we talking about? We're not about? talking about y'all's preference. We're talking about who's the bigger artist right now. Oh, well, yeah, A That's Boogie. Fair. Oh, okay, yeah, A Boogie's bigger mm, than Fab. He not right elite now. though. I don't know. He elite for, he this, elite gen for this generation. He ain't elite in the boroughs. Like, what are we talking about? New York. Oh, okay, okay we talking about New York. Right? Yeah, that's fair. Fab probably more nationally known. But that lets you know how quiet exactly. it is right now for New York rap. Yeah, if I got to get the A Boogie and we on yeah. number three. That, I, 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 I get named, what y'all saying. I'm just telling y'all who's hot. You mentioned Young and May and A Boogie. That, that should tell you Damn. what's they, going on. Okay, who the hottest three rappers in New York right now? Nobody. Nigga, like, Cardi, I mean, Cardi, if you Cardi had and to Cardi. Name somebody. So it's Cardi, Davies, and... No, it's Cardi. <laughs> Comma, Cardi, comma, and Cardi. If that's you had it. to name two other people. Wow. That's <laughs> Crickets, bro. It is tough. I don't even I, know. I don't know. Mm. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. That's like, I don't know what's going on, but like, y'all, like, somebody let me know. We, I know we got listeners up top. Who are we missing? Maybe it just ain't reached us yet. Mm. Let us know who's popping coming out of NY. Yeah. It has not hit south of the Mason Dixon line yet because we haven't heard it. It's not popping. Yeah, because everything they're playing in the club is. Not New York music. That's what I'm so. That, where is it from? Where's the Where's the music from? Let us know, Dwayne. Uh, <laughs> Let us know where the music come from. <laughs> Atlanta. Oh wow. Duh. It's been that way for quite some time. Man. <laughs> you got any losers, man, for this first quarter, Twin? What you got? Uh, yeah, I have one loser and one loser only, and it's the culture as a whole. Mm. 
because of Nipsey's demise. Of course, we yeah. were robbed. Yeah. We're robbed so, of Nipsey. Um, and yeah. that, that's one thing that I, I, I wanted to say about you, since you bring that up, and, and what people do when you, you're talking about cancel culture, people like, get Kodak out of here. Niggas like Kodak turn into niggas like Eric Holder if they're not addressed early on before they're told oh, to, wow. to. If they're not told to leave, if they're not told to, like, if they're not... It, if they're not explained to how they should conduct themselves, that's what you turn into, mm. and you don't want that. Yeah, <laughs> and we, we got, got that. time for that. That's yeah, all. yeah, that's no good. But yeah, so that's my, you know. Yeah, big loser. That's clearly. a big loser. Um, let's get to this music break. Um, what we got? Speaking of the West Coast, Spe- what we got? Yeah, speaking of the West Coast, this is a bop. For those who don't know what a bop is, straight from the West Side, this this song is great except for Blueface verse. He's it's it's great a terrible. For Blueface? He's a terrible rapper. Who else on there? Uh, this is G Easy featuring Blueface, G-E-Z. All Black, and YG. Mm. Shout out to the West Coast. Let's we'll see what you're doing. We are back. That was G Easy featuring ten other people from the West, West Coast. Uh, the joint is called <laughs> West Coast. How you feel about the song? I'm all the way out of there on Blueface. I'm out. That was one of my guys beginning of the year. I'm out. <laughs> I did no, don't bring blue That was one of your picks, wasn't it? It was. Like, no, that's out now. I'm was. out. I'm selling. You can buy it for the cheap. <laughs> yeah. It's like billions. It's a fire sale. I'm yeah. out on blue yeah. face. Dude. A, quit, listen, Universal. Yeah, I'm out. Y'all won't do this to us. I'm Stop forcing this nigga down. Yeah, I'm out of there on blue face. Yeah, nah, that, but that's. I'm not gonna lie. That record kind of tough though. Mine, oh, but tough uh, but the, a couple of cats on here. And obviously, we didn't play the whole damn song. It's too many people. But a couple of cats on here were jacked. Like blue face jacked it. I don't know who the all black dude is he but he had that same kind of herky jerky hyphy off beat off kilter style mm-hmm. i can't really get jiggy with that shit but the, the record is hot though i'm not gonna lie yeah. and y'all know i don't fuck with it's G-Z. a west coast jeezy overrated to yeah. me i mean i like young Jero. uh shout out to my boy j-ho uh <laughs> i just like it's so it gave me a west coast a west coast vibe like i spent time in the bay and like this makes you want to you know what i'm saying this is this is a straight california record no i'm not uh, mad at this I'm, I'm gonna be real i'm not mad at this song g-easy it gives me like i said this before on the show He's like when you walk into Walgreens and somebody's doing a cover of Beyonce to the left, what? but they can sing, and you're like, oh, okay, they can sing, but it's not Beyonce, like it's not the same, there's no soul in it. That's a, that's your example. Like, G-Eazy imitation. is the cover person like that gets played rap. in Walgreens when you walk oh, in. Oh, man, no, nah, don't do that. Young Jero, don't do that. I seen him on Noisy, man. He just rubbed me the wrong way. He was like, he was on Vice. And he seemed like a cool interview. cat. I mean, he seemed like he was Real cool. cool. He seemed like he was trying a little nah. bit. I, I, think to me. I think you're trying a little this too hard to, to find faults. So. This is to me. This you might be reaching to a little too hard. Yeah, for real. He just seems like he's trying can a little rap, too man. hard. He, he can't. He yeah. It's cool. I ain't like the song, though. Yeah, I'm out of there on Blueface. No, he do good covers. All the way out of there on Blueface. He make a good cover band. Um, <laughs> all right, man. Before we get out of here, man, question of the week. Uh, Puff P. Diddy, he is rebranding his Revolt Music Conference. So, man, I guess we won't be hitting that this year. Womp womp. Um, he is rebranding it as a hip hop summit. Mm. Okay, now this will be a multi day event held in Atlanta and LA, two separate weekends, not at the same damn time. Um, is this a big deal, little deal, or no deal that he scrapped the music conference and now has a hip hop summit? Thanks for listening, Puff. Stole my Brock Nation brunch idea. This is exactly what I was talking about. I think it's a great idea, especially if he's going to be one of the keynote speakers and addressing it. Sort of like the vein of Revolt, but making it more so as a call to action. Plans put in place, um, panels to give you information, just things that you're able to do. Enjoy the water. Uh, things that you're able to do and, and, and forward yourself in the hip-hop game if you're trying to be in it and make money from it or if you're just trying to learn and, and, and know more about the culture. I feel like that he should be able to cover a lot of ground Around. Thank you for stealing my idea, Puff. We appreciate um, that. Yeah, this sound that actually sounds ex- a lot like the Revolt Music Conference, which you just <laughs> described. Yeah. Um, this is the same shit. Um, <laughs> nice try, try to repackage it, change the cities. No, this won't be a big deal until Puff hits me up. Because right now, he is bullshitting with Revolt. Period. Like, I don't even know if they got HD channels yet on Revolt. As wow. if, do they have HD yet? Because it's not on my shit. All I know is they got Breakfast Club and they got Nora. All I know is they bullshitting mm-hmm. with theyself. And he needs to call me, Puff, hit my line. I can change Revolt overnight. What? This Hip Hop Summit, 20000 for tick all this bullshit. Bro, stop is that, that shit. Nah, but they were wow. busting heads for the art. Yeah, Revolt the tickets mu- is like that. The Revolt Music Conference, they were busting heads. Yeah. And, like, name one person that popped from RMC, dude. You can't. I thought, uh... Uh, Bryson Tiller came from down there. He did get discovered down there. Yeah. Where's he at though? Even though he did take off. But 
<laughs> no. <laughs> All right, name two niggas from the RMC that took. Nah, go ahead. I want to know how this is going to be different because actually this is not an original idea at all. This is um, Russell Simmons. Did had, Russell Simmons did this in 2001. Mm. Mm. Um, so I, I just <laughs> wonder. I'm sorry. I said he stole it from me then. then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now all I was saying, I, all I <laughs> mean is 16, for this 17, <laughs> uh, uh, But I'm just I, saying. Oh so yeah. It's, so he did the same thing. I believe it was in Detroit, and I remember because this is when Kwame Kilpatrick was uh, mm. running for mayor. So. This is what happened. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I just, I'm interested in seeing how Puff will make it different than how Russell did. I think it's something that's needed, though. I think that, that there really needs to be the summit, and there needs to be an initiative that comes from, and I right. think that it needs to I be agree. a a marquee event for big names in hip hop each year, just in order to keep continuing to move the f- culture forward, continuing to have conversations that are prevalent to people, and just able to make more money, more more decisions that are interbase as opposed to other people making decisions for the culture. Somebody from Revolt called me immediately. This this ship is sinking. Numbers I don't, at the bottom of the screen. I do not want that ship to sink. It's too important. I think y'all can do big things with that shit. This ain't it though. Mm. This ain't it. Y'all need to lock down the T V network first. Get that shit popping before y'all start doing it. I have a couple of shows. Isn't um this shit trash. It's it's state of the culture on Revolt? Who? I thought that was on YouTube. I ain't never heard of this shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it is that it's it's Breakfast part. Club and uh, Brilliant Idiots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. I mean, not Brilliant Idiots, uh, Drink Champs. I'm sleep on all oh, yeah. three. I yeah. love Drink, drink Champs. Drink Champs is big as fuck. You, yeah. you still look at Champs? See? I saw when it first started. Oh, okay. That's yeah, big, That's looked the looked biggest podcast fall off. Probably. I did kind of fall off, yeah. Kind of. Shit wasn't good to begin with. No, uh, that, that's hating. What, did I not say that, though? Was no. I not the first nigga like, this you, shit you, really ain't you that can, good? You can't be like, oh, it's not good when it's good, and then eventually it ain't good, and be like, oh, I told you. But I think it's Don't all good for way. the culture. Everybody Don't has a different outlet. It was good at the beginning. Everyone right. has their different outlets. People like what they like. <laughs> that's <true. laughs> That's, all I, that's, that's what I always say. Uh, yeah, I keep doing your thing. That's true. Call me Puff. Puff, high letters. On Decker of the Week, um, I want this to go to everyone, all the responses that we got from last week's episode. Damn, you stole that from me. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out my guy, Big Jeff. Shout out all the YouTube comments, Mission Works Printing, Chaz Levi. Um, shout out to the DMs I got on Twitter. Shout out to the texts I got. Uh, we appreciate everybody listening. Really? And uh, that was a tough episode, yep. but we appreciate y'all. That was a with tough it. episode, and um, I got a lot of responses, too, a lot of texts. Shout out to Daniel. Shout out to mm-hmm. Dustin at Beard Organic. Shout out to all the people that reached out and said they appreciate Appreciated the episode yeah. uh, more so than anything. They they found somewhere where they could go and listen to a conversation about Nipsey. They wasn't too over the top. They didn't make them too sad. Just gave them what they were looking for. So we appreciate y'all showing the gratitude that you guys showed and telling us that we did a good job with it. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely, we appreciate it, all of it. I got the same. It was, it was great. <clears throat> we had to get you know get through it, but it was it was great content. Shout out your sure. guy Bird and Weezy. Both of them told me when we was at the yeah, uh, yeah, Slim and Husky. Yeah. Shout out those guys, Bird and Weezy. Um, shout out Demo from Slim and Huskies. He told me that he listened to it. It was pretty good. So Word. appreciate y'all guys. Absolutely, new music and make sure we got. Uh, we have my man Anderson Pac coming out. Anderson Pack, Anderson Pac. You say tomato, I say tomato. Anderson Skill. <laughs> Ventura's coming out. Really looking forward to this album. Um, you you know. As you may know or not know, I'm a fan, big fan of Anderson Park. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we Nate Dogg is on there, right? Nate Dogg? Yeah. Is on the album? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I wasn't privy to Ain't the information. Uh, they got some interesting features on there. Smokey Robinson on there. Yeah. See? That's all, yeah. <laughs> Fire. How could you hate on a Smokey Robinson record? That's a fact. Yeah. It's all, um, a legend in itself, Pete Rock, has an album coming out called mm-hmm. The Return of SP1200. You see why Rick Ross should have dropped when I said he should have dropped? We're yeah. listening to Pete I Rock right checking, now? I ain't checking for that Pete Rock. Uh, you I can't. Ain't gonna lie to you. You we won't disrespect legends. He's a legend. I, I'm just not checking for that. And uh, y'all might, since y'all don't like legends, y'all might like this. Uh, Riff Raff is coming out with oh my God. <laughs> That's his Pink guy. Python. That's Paul. His guy. Riff Raff, your guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, out of all three of those, Anderson Park for sure for me. I'm definitely playing that. Y'all go to the rap chat, man. Check us out, man. We appreciate y'all joining us on Facebook, the conversation. Let us know about the New York rappers. You said they were dead. No, we I said it's know. quiet. Okay, it's first we, we quarter. Know. We, we say anything cracking. was dead. We want to know is it cracking up there? Also, free little boosie. <laughs> got jammed up. Yeah. Shout, out to, 300. Shout out to them 300 Boosie. albums he sold. Yeah. Shout out to those 300 people who bought y'all, that And he was Boosie. mad. Y'all though. rappers going to learn about coming to mad. Atlanta trying to live on the outskirts. It ain't Dang. Atlanta. The outskirts is not Atlanta. Where he get, where was Cowie it? The Cowie County. County? They'll hang your black ass up. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> be careful. He going to get probation. He going to get probation. Um, man, do us a favor. Go to YouTube.com slash On Deck TV Podcast and hit that subscribe button. That's right there. We'd appreciate that. And after you're done, go to iTunes. Leave a comment, rate, and subscribe. We would appreciate that. 
also. Uh, what you got on deck for the weekend, sir? I'm going to go to the Braves and the Mets game. Oh, wow. so I'm from Shaking Queens. I'm going to pull up. You going alone? or I'm know, pulling I up. I don't mind. You can meet me there. Uh, you can battery. That's you going good, for real? Yeah, totally. That's a good robbery game. We yeah, I want to see that. I don't, I don't know which night DeGrom pitching Friday or Saturday, but I want to see it. So. No, y'all act like y'all know pitchers and shit. I watch baseball. Yeah, we watch, we watch sports, man. <laughs> <laughs> sports. <laughs> <laughs> Everything sports. What you got on deck, man? Uh, uh, apparently the Braves game. <laughs> do, <it. laughs> gonna, um, do that. Uh Got to finish my taxes this weekend. Mm. Uh, for sure. You, you couldn't have done it. Keep uh, playing with Uncle Sam. <laughs> uh, I'm not in a hurry when you owe money, so they ain't going to give a damn. You still got to be in by the 15th whether you owe money. said this weekend. Okay. That's yeah, true. it's done. Yeah, my Fair man enough. already got a shout out to Linwood, my accountant. We got that. Shout out to Linwood, my, my accountant. accountant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Bougie meter rises, <laughs> dude. Uh, I'm slow motion this weekend. I might hit the music, um, the movies at Pet Cemetery out. Anybody, y'all hear anything about that Pet Cemetery? Oh, I do want to see that. Y'all Not this weekend that? though. But I'm, I'm I like to do this the delay, the lead after. You know, I like. Yeah. That. I yeah. might fuck with that. I, I might fuck with that Shazam. I ain't fuck with no Steve. Hollywood run out of ideas, man. They remaking Pet Cemetery. So I might fuck with that Shazam for free. Shazam. Yeah, what's wrong? It's comic book <laughs> shit, man. What are y'all doing? Comic books. Yeah, take it's a comic book. Game of Thrones come out this weekend. That's all that matters. We're five days away. Winter is coming. Definitely doing that on Sunday. We out. Kill me. Don't call me after eight on Sunday. Winter is coming. Yeah. That shit trash, man. Yeah. Y'all be easy on Deck TV Podcast. What? We appreciate y'all I'm listening. Going to see Shazam, but don't yeah, want to exactly. watch Game what of Thrones. We out. <laughs> we got Shazam. <laughs> and we're out. Thank <laughs> you.